Welcome to episode two of Top Rods. Today, I'm down on the Jurassic coastline. Joining me for the trip is the European Shore Court record holder for the Pollock, Mr. Bobby Drew from Timworth SAS. Today, we're down here targeting small eyed Ray. So we're gonna cover the day's fishing and also go through the European Pollock night itself. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have Mr. Bobby Drew. Hello, Hello mate, right. how's it going? Not too bad, thanks. Yeah, man. lovely day for it. Yeah, it is, last night. I would have thought we'd see a few fish out today. What do you reckon? Never know. Never know. Us here. Hopefully someone will have something. So before we go into the se this today's session, we're gonna go and run through the main session itself. The night in question with the European Shore Court Pollock. Um, what an incredible achievement. Yeah, it was. It, it didn't really at home till we sort of next couple of days where yeah. we, we we didn't realize it was a record but yeah. luckily in the process of catching the fish yeah obviously as you do you yeah. weigh your fish take your pictures and everything yeah. was done there and then Stu was like oh I wonder what the record is and he had a look and he said that and then it was like no way done yeah, it. yeah. It was like, Whoa. And then he was like can we claim for it, it was like, when it went on and then obviously eventually we yeah was given the record so yeah. yeah the excitement of catching the fish was Obviously phenomenal yeah. seeing a fish like that off the shore anyway. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And then it was quite nice because it wasn't instant, you know, yeah. all in one. It's yeah. two days later, later, can it be the record? And then eventually three months went later, on and got better yeah, and better. you got the record. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, no, it went on. It was awesome. So before we actually go into the Norway trip itself, yeah. it, the, you've, you've targeted Pollock and done very well off the, off the shores around the South Devon coastline and Cornish coastline before as well when you... Yeah, yeah, very well. Which, but, well, just under 12 pounds the biggest off the south coast. That's, a, that's an amazing southwest. fish. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That, that was, that that to me is the, I mean, I know it's a European record Pollock in Norway and whatever, but the 12 pound Pollock in this, yeah. this country means a lot more. But yeah, I can imagine why, yeah. it's hard fishing, especially with yeah. that in, in our water, yeah. it's a phenomenal catch. Yeah, the hours the that went wise, into that. Especially for the club fishing is just, um, it was, what was it, was it worked out 200 and? Well, the NFSA was 312, and then it was like 380 percent in the club. So unreal, yeah. really good achievement. Yeah. yeah. What's um so for so anybody what's going out there and, and wanting to target a pollock, what yeah. would be your main points to put across for a novice angler's point of view for targeting? Well, similar to here and in Norway, how we had a boat really. I, I fish really really long rigs. Yeah. So fishing in this country, I use two meter plus pulleys. Yeah. With pop ups. Pop ups. So get the bait up as far as you can, yeah. and obviously distance is helps. But with the rigs, you know, when I say distance, you're only looking at 80 yards, 80 yards. on a rig with that bait. Yeah. So it's not necessarily far. So when when you when you say pop ups, um, do you, what do you actually pop the bait inside? Yeah, or just, you pop up the pop up the line like no, nah, just put polystyrene right, inside, the squid. inside the squid. squid. But presentation is massively main key. I mean, main in this key. country, I've only ever had three pollock on pop-ups on, on the squid baits I've yeah. had a, that's four pounds seven pound or twelve pound yeah my three biggest. very good fish as well so yeah yeah other, other than those three fish I've never had a never pull up no one. so for condition wise for pe people going out would you calm weather rough weather um full moon's the main one. Oh, you go a lot on the moon yeah yeah all on the moon yeah I mean you, that night we had had the 12 pound one over here yeah or I had the 12 pound one uh, we had about 50 fish between us before we had that. And you put that down to the, the, the light, light yeah. in the sea. You, you, you could fish the weekend before or after and, and not hit fish, fish, but then at that same time, that 12 pound fish, out of all the other fish we caught, the biggest one even over two pounds. So there's a big, big difference in size. The size, yeah. straight away. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's going off the site in, in the darkness, obviously, when they're feeding. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, that, the 12 pound one was a massive shock because it was, we fished the tide all the way down. Yeah. And it, it was sort of getting to the point of boring with the amount of small fish yeah. we were catching. So I sat there with Joe and I thought, oh, now I'm just going big or yeah. you know, give it Don't an hour. Like, yeah. And I put put the brig out and sat down and didn't even tighten me line down. I sat down, put the rod down, turned around, light a fag. And then as I turned back round, the rod was gone. Boom. Joe was shouting and the rod had just gone. Straight in? Well, it, luckily it was on the last ledge. So, was it? And if, if that fish took one more dive and then that would have been, Lost. you never would have seen. I've, I've had them up to 5.15 and uh, in this country and in the initial take of the pollock is phenomenal yeah even at that sort of size it's yeah. just like bang and most of the time I've had them in rough conditions rain yeah. 
on raying gear and you know it's as soon as you've got one you know it's on yeah but they seem to fight like hell and then they, they give up you know yeah. what, I mean? it, what that sort of size pollock do they give up or do they keep going or the, the one that i had a 12 luckily from experience the one the seven pound one yeah. i had took me 15 minutes to even move it did it so i, I knew it was a decent fish yeah. i just kept putting the rod down thinking, wait 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 yeah. so when that 12 i loosened the drag off before I, when I finally got down yeah. to the rod and picked the rod up and loosened off and thought right let's there see see what it is yeah. when I'd done that I struck and the fish come out of the ground and it took line I mean Just went. my instant think well, I had a seal on I can honestly <laughs> say and I was looking at the reel and then same thing again gained some line went to ground yeah Two or three minutes later, given the slack, managed to move it again, okay. took a load of line. It, it done that all the way till it come in. Yeah. And as it, it come in and we had our headlights on and that was, you know, just seeing did, that appear on the water. Didn't know what to do ourselves. <laughs> and Joe was sort of saying, he's like, oh, where do I gap it? Where do I gap it? And I was saying, anywhere, just the get that get fish it. on the rocks. Yeah. It wouldn't come in. But um, the one in Norway, that I mean, with Stuart there as well, that was the fight off that was the runs was two massive massive runs where it almost come to the surface and then went straight back to the bottom i didn't really click on to the size of the fish because of the previous cod we had yeah um but when that eventually come to the surface i mean it was like opposite to the 12 pound fish yeah. it was i was saying like oh, it's a massive pollock yeah Stu's walked down to the water and thinking it's a cod and it? said he's like i oh, know it's a cod and we was sort of saying and he was like, i'll bet you a million it's a cod we're having a laugh and joke while the fish is just sat yeah. there and I was like, you well, could tell the by the initial fight could you well, the right the cod, yeah. the cod that we had that day were up to 19 pounds, oh. and they, they just don't take line. They just hold the weight, Wait. and you just hold the rod yeah. till they turn the red. Yeah. Nodding. But uh, this this thing didn't didn't feel heavy, no. but the runs were massive. Powerful. Yeah. yeah. So you know it's a pollock. Yeah, yeah, you knew it, yeah. knew it was a cold yeah, fish. Yeah, cold pollock. Yeah. 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 So going going back for the is it your first session to Norway? That was my first ever session. Yeah, Unreal. Trip. Unreal. Yeah. So starting off with the holiday itself. Yeah, the, the journey over to. Saltstram or Boda where we went is a long way and transfers are a nightmare yeah. so it's like a 24 a hour waiting. trip just to get there yeah. first couple of days were really bad fishing yeah. so for me it was still all new saying bad fishing lots of fish up to seven eight pound <laughs> so I was having fun but the rest of them we've been there a few times you know it was, they want the big ones yeah, yeah, they, yeah they were no yeah. fun at all and then it, it sort of stayed like that and we went on fishing deeper marks up to 300 foot yeah which was just phenomenal out, out of this yeah. world um, and then luckily on the fourth day, we, which is the only good day out of the seven day trip where yeah. we actually caught fish, where had three double fig cod up to 19 pounds, yeah. that pollock plus cold fish up towards double figures. Amazing. But um, no, a lot, a lot of people think it's easy over there. But so it, when you have a fish like that, do you look back and think to yourself, what did I do on that cast? What did I do on that bait? You can remember yeah. the bait up the cast. like. Well, yeah, it's, I fish quite hard when I do fish. Yeah. So. I'm constant on my on baits board. changing. Yeah. Sure, it's quite laid back and fish a bigger bait and weight, yeah. but I'd fish smaller bait and fish through the fish. But on that particular mark, as the week went on, my rigs got longer and longer and longer and longer. Because yeah. there's no, you don't need distance over there. So no. You're, 30, you're just 40, trying to keep your yards. bait well away from your so, leg. So, yes, yeah, we ended up on that mark fishing like two and a half, three meter pulleys. Really? So, you lift your rods up yeah. here and you just yeah. trying to fling it. Yeah. Because of the tide so yeah. strong, I imagine that bait was probably. Nine, ten foot off the water, water. just just doing this. Yeah. So bluffing, bluffing around yeah. somewhere. And the cod one on the bottom, nothing, nothing was on the bottom. I mean, Stuart, Stuart that day, he hardly caught a fish. Yeah. So I'd <laughs> be horrible <laughs> to him, but yeah, it, it, it got to the point by the end where he was like, right, go on, we're going. Because do you put that yeah. down to the length of your trace? It, just with the tide so yeah. strong. I mean, you didn't know when you were at the bottom. No. You had to just from experience, well, experience a of, of it. Time. When yeah. the tide was less, you count how long you yeah. led at the bottom. You know so on your line, yeah, really, yeah. you didn't even know, so you, you was guessing, and that's why the bites, you know, if you had a little tap like that, because you had so much bow a line out, yeah. you didn't know if it's a two or three pound fish. Or, or a 20 pound, yeah, 40 pound you, fish. Yeah, you didn't have a clue. So was that the best fish of the trip? Um, there was obviously the best fish. Yeah. Um, there was, with Hall well, me and Stuart didn't, the other two that went of us a halibut over 30. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. to each other, innit? They're saying they've had the best one, but it's sort of like, well, hang on a minute, but... No, I was happy with one. Yeah, anyway. I, amazing experience. Yeah, I went for a twenty-pound cod, so to Did come you? back with a over twenty-pound pollock. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Was it shortly after you come back from that you had the big one over here then? 
Was it or was it before? No, I had it before. Was it before? Yeah. yeah. I had the big one in September and then went over there. You actually there. won the Wyvern with, 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 with the Pollock, wasn't it? Yeah, the yeah, Castle yeah, Trophy, trophy with that. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it was about well, six weeks later when so I had that one, so. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> achievement, what an achievement. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. what we're going to do is we're going to go over and sit, speak to Stuart now. Yep. He, um, he, he's been to Norway a few times, I suppose, over the years, has he? Yeah, he's yeah. very, very experienced. Yeah, so he's, he's been over about 20 times. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough to sort of I'll guide him a little bit over here yeah. and so on, but then he knows hell of a lot over yeah, there. Yeah, so. help you out in return over yeah, there. Yeah, everything I've know over there and yeah. everything I've done. Yeah. I mean, even now I'm going back, like yeah. with last year, having caught up to 38. Yeah. I'm going back again in six weeks' time. Yeah. You know, it's nothing's down to me. No. I'm, even though Stu's not going, he's led the way. So yeah, I, he's I experience, know local knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. It's always the key with things, I find, isn't it? Yeah, local yeah. knowledge is big, but Definitely. he does a lot on the maps, on the phones. Does he? Yeah, yeah. A bit of a geek, so is nice he? to have. <laughs> a bit of a geek to it. <laughs> uh, what we'll do, we'll go over to Stuart then and yeah. we'll talk about this main session, and we'll go back to you, Bobby, and we can cover uh, the main hints and tips of the shortcut pollock. Yeah, no worries. Cheers. Stuart Norris. Hello, mate. Hello, Andy. You all right? You're right? Yeah. yeah. Nice day for it, isn't it? It is a nice day, yeah. It can be better. So before we go into the actual main session of the Pollock itself, we'll go about some of the history of your experience in Norway, because it's something you've done many times over the years. I've been doing it for quite a while now, nearly 10 years. Uh, 2009 was the first time uh, we went over there when Phil Dale just started up. Yeah. And um, basically since then, we've looked to push ourselves further each time, move to different places, mainly in search of Alibut. Yeah. And we found them. Yeah. We left uh, Scar on Sunday area to go and fish nearer the coast and stuff, and um, that's where we found them. Yeah. And we've gone on since then. Let's be honest, it, it, Norway to what it is now back then wasn't known of really. <sighs> well, Phil Dells, he was the first one to latch on to the guided thing over yeah. there really by um, providing accommodation, etc. Yeah. Um, but it's fantastic a place Scar on Sunday is if you want Alibut. Yeah. It, it's you just got to go and find them wherever they are really yeah. and uh, we weren't getting them there so we looked elsewhere yeah and you, and you found them we found them yeah, yeah. that's the way to small do it. ones to start with but it's a learning curve you find out what they like what they don't like you know and uh went from there really. how many times have you been over there now then roughly is it once a year thing or <laughs> no you get over there? It's, i think it's been about 20 times have you in 10 years in nine years yeah, yeah. <laughs> people have been a lot more than me but yeah. you know it's addictive once you go there and you experience it for yourself, it's hard to find a comparison in this country. You to, can't. No, you, I, yeah. if, you, if you're a regular tote fisher, say, or catching lots of big rays, yeah. and you would get the same buzz. Right. But, you know, I just like the country as well. It's, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. There was something about it. I went over there and um, it was even like the air, it's just so clean yeah. and you're sitting yeah. there. And it's like being on, it's, it's out of this world, really. Well, I come home, I was a bit emotional. <laughs> driving in your car to a mark 20 minutes away and seeing one other car on your way there. It's, it's mental, it's, yeah. You know, it's, and the fish is over there, it's just, yeah, it's just a constant. It's a um, very lucky place to be, but... Uh, if you said to someone in this country you could get bored of catching a six-pound cod, they would think you're... Yeah, mental. It, mentally ill. Yeah. <laughs> but over there, it's, they're a nuisance. What PBs have you got from being over there, your time over there? Then? PBs, my PB halibut is forty-four and a half pounds Monster. Um, I've had two over 40, one yeah. just on 44, 44 and a half. Yeah. Uh, one well in its 30s that I tried dragging out by the trace and it pinged, so I never got to weigh that one. No. I think you're right blowing me on trumpet. I've got the biggest haddock, shortcut haddock over there, which is 12.5. I'm not sure if anyone else has a double over there yet, but um, that's definitely the fish that I look up yeah. to as well. Yeah. Um, place up to nearly four pound. Cod. Cod 26 from Scarn <laughs> Sunday, incidentally. <laughs> what, what a cracking Yeah, thing. Phil's proud of that record, I think, because I left yeah. Scarn Sunday in search of bigger fish. and. I had my biggest fish cod from Scarn Sunday. Yeah. But of course, the amount of species you can catch at Scarn Sunday is just unreal, really. Yeah. You know, the place fishing there is um, unreal. can't be beaten no. in Norway. No. Not that I know of yet, anyway. Big ones have been caught, but the amount that you can get at Scarn Sunday is is, is, yeah. is, is great. Is that, yeah. Would that be your favourite place in Norway? Because I know you meet, like to move around a lot and try to beat the yeah. crowds more, I think, I suppose. Well, part of me wants to find new places yeah. and find out what these places 
can hold do and hold. what they hold yeah, yeah how you fish them even though the standard you know the setups in Norway are pretty much standard all throughout but yeah definitely I like to get around and find yeah. other places yeah I don't like being around other people over no there now. no so but <laughs> all in all when I last year we actually went back to Scotland Sunday for two short trips yeah because it's it's an easy place to hop on a plane yeah be yeah. there in five or six hours yeah and we, we had a four day trip and a three day trip and we had a great time both yeah. times so yeah. it was nice to go back brilliant yeah. mate so for pollock itself before bobby obviously <laughs> annihilated the big one what was the biggest pollock you actually seen landed over there personally because we don't don't really fish for pollock over there as such i have done a bit of pollock and with lures the biggest i've seen was about seven and a half pound yeah i had sorry my friend ray actually had one 11. yeah um, we'd heard of some decent sized ones being caught. I think Phil again, Phil, Phil Dell had, had sort of like took the pollocking on yeah. and was quite successful at it. And um, that was it really, but it wasn't something I was looking to do over there no, really. I was no. after the cod and yeah. so Just because of the size you thought you would get on them? What's know, that the? Yeah, knowing there's like, you, like the big ones like that. Yeah. It's, there's, ob there's obviously bigger out there as well. I just love flatties. Yeah. I love all flatfish. I love flounders, dabs, yeah. plaice, halibut, halibut that sort especially, of size, yeah. And and for a fish that can grow up to well in excess of four or five hundred yeah. pound. You can't go wrong. <laughs> What's it feel like to have a big halibut like that on? It's 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 scary. Is it? It's scary. When I mean when you get a, a decent sized halibut that actually runs. Yeah. You, there's no stopping it. No. There's no matter what gear you use, you're not stopping it. No. You're, you're letting it take line and just hope it doesn't find a snag. Yeah. And that's all you, I can say really. So it's, rotten bottoms are a must. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, especially if you're fishing some of the the ledgy, you know, the, the, the marks, marks that got ledgers in front of you and, but. Bling, did you find that? Like a lot of people you're really using I've, floundering. I've chatted about this with a few anglers. Personally, I don't believe in bling for, for halibut. No, I think keep it natural. Keep it natural, but if you're gonna, my personal preference for halibut is to fish an up and over. Yeah. You know, at least a three foot trace so that your bait's well away from your way. Right. And if you're in an area that's not too tidal, I, I twitch. Yeah. I put it out as far as I can, every few minutes, twitch give it a it. quick twitch. And then see what happens. Just keep movement. Yeah, movement can, yeah. 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 Get it on. So right, we're gonna go on to the main session itself then. So can you remember back to the, the evening oh, itself yeah. the session? <laughs> I remember it very well actually. Yeah. It started off quite badly because we left the digs, which are about half an hour away from South Australia, and uh, I said to Bobby on route, I said, you know, there's been a lot of snow. I said if there's a lot of snow there, we can't go down there because yeah. the road down to this mark is quite steep. Yeah. And we would never have got back out. So anyway, we got there and uh, it was covered in snow yeah so one of the the ladies that lives there she's a nice lady i've met her a couple of times um i've knocked on the door now to be, we parked there and then i realized i'd left my boots behind <laughs> no way so it's back in the car back to the days got me boots back again parked up got down there i put bobby on the outside of the mark because i wanted him to have the best chance of being at his first time there yeah. and that and um and that's where we i say we started on that mark that day and bobby was catching fish steady throughout i think he had a cod up to nine 19 pounds or so and then uh, it was darkness, and uh, <laughs> just when I'm thinking, oh, like, you know, we've had enough now, the tide's really pushing in. Yeah. He starts screaming at me, Stu, Stu, you know, I've got this. Nah, it's not a pollock, it's a cod, like, you know. Yeah. And I got my head torched, I said, It's a cod. He said, No, 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 it's a pollock. But, you know, I grabbed the gaff and went down, and as soon as I got halfway down, I could see it was it's this a great big pollock really? down there, yeah. I was just astonished. We were talking earlier and you were saying over here, they got, like, the row over there, it's just a one solid fish. Exactly. If you can imagine a 20 pound pollock caught in this country, normally when the fish are heavy and row, it's fat. Yeah. It is, you know, this was just a normal conditioned fish. fish. And when I seen it laying on the top there, I was absolutely gobsmacked. Absolutely. Because yeah. this mark I've fished at least a dozen times before and I've never seen a pollock caught there on no, bait. No. And I've shadded, I've used spinners, shads a lot there. Yeah. Never had a pollock. One of the many joins in Norway. <laughs> Norway. This is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> never know. No, but yeah. So that, you didn't actually know at that, that that point it was a European record, did you? A couple uh, of days later. No, I did actually. That, that night I said to Bob, I'm "Sure, that's a record." I need double check it then. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Bobby quite realised himself. Until a couple of days. I, I, we didn't really go into it. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just another great fish and bonus trip to yeah, the Norway trip. Yeah. But, but um, he, I said to him, well, you want to get onto it and get it, you know, see what that air into it. And um, he did, he got it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Ideal, mate. Yeah. Cheers for your time. No worries, Cheers, Thank, Thank you, you mate. <laughs>
So going back to more of Target and Pollock again, so for someone coming out now, yeah. um, wanting to target a Pollock, what would be some of the main advice you would give them for targeting the species? Uh, well, first thing, obviously, find the features in the water, rocks, weed, yeah. tidal, quite important. Yeah. Um, main thing, before you even start putting, like, dedicating yourself to it, is find Pollock. Yeah. I don't mean find a Pollock or go and catch one or two. Yeah. Find somewhere where you can go and catch 30, 40, Consistently. 50, yeah. and a lot of fish. Because when you will come across a big one when you start catching yeah. a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, those numbers. And then when you start like float fishing, mackerel baits, anything like that, pick them up and then live sand you and get that, but you will not, well you'll be, you will get them, you'll yeah. be lucky to get a big one like that. Yeah. So when you start getting those numbers then, just think in your head, right, that's it, now stop, yeah. back up, pop up baits, whole squid. Big baits are the yeah. key to the bigger fish, you think? Yeah, well definitely, yeah. present it well, Yeah. and then just sit and wait. So for bait wise, you would, with squid, mackerel, fish baits, just well, fish baits? Anything you can present really. Yeah. Anything that's going to pop People out of it, yeah, on, half a mackerel or mackerel yeah. whatever but I, the only thing I've ever caught big ones on is old squid. Squid. Just just pops up squid. Yeah, that's the only thing I would so say. for like general areas of like obviously we're in the southwest now where what sort of areas would you be looking at without going into like venues itself? Yeah. I mean all of the South Ams down yeah. down Plymouth way. Anyway with general rock half map. decent depth of water. Yeah. Um sawmill, sterile, they've all got big fish but yeah. it depends what you class as big fish, isn't it? Four or five pound is a big pollock, but yeah, I was, yeah. It, it, to be honest, you want, everyone's after that double. I'd say that's that's that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the goal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. When I had that seven pounder, I did say I was a fish of a lifetime. Five, five, four hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, didn't ever expect it to be bigger. No. But now I know what's there, and carrying on with what I do. Yeah. Down there is why not go for the your goals, record your one go, day. Yeah, you're gone. Your goal is bigger again, though. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it will be yeah. always be the same yeah. with sea angling. You always want more, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you catch something, you think you never get one bigger, but in your head, you. Yeah, there, you there, is, it, there is always yeah. bigger out there as well. It's just a joy of sea angling, I think. I do but, believe British traveled fish are where I fish, but you could be lucky enough to catch them. Anyway. Yeah, it's like a lot of areas in Cornwall would be perfect for it. Yeah. It's a lot of different ways of obviously spinning. Um, you can Lots of different types. Obviously, yeah. you're targeting the bigger fish. Yeah, That's why you're, gonna, you're going bait yeah. fishing for them. I think live bait would be the best way, but the areas that I fish, it's just impossible to get a bait do out Do you there. find that the conditions have a lot, lot to do with it? I know you said the, um, the, the moon's a big thing. Yeah, moon, full moon definitely yeah. helps. Yeah. The, light in the night yeah. but conditions wise yeah. any rough conditions no it's flat calm when I have my big one Is I've it? had them when it's rough I've had them when it's dirty you don't really um, no I had that big one was like say the time of giving up with that many fish yeah. just sit back and that's it and I was on near enough dead low water so yeah. you know fishing all over high water thinking you're going to get the big, big one, one and six hours later so you're you looking for really kelpy conditions? Kelp, mix, right, yeah. mix, mix, mix yeah. the rougher ground. Anything that looks like you ain't going to get your gear back. back. That's where yeah. you want to be in. So yeah. rotten bottom is essential for that type of fishing, obviously. Um, well, I, I don't fish one, but I generally have granny knots in the end bottom of my rigs. Yeah. So I think that helps because if you get, it's always going to snap if you pull out. You've got to make sure of that. Yeah, yeah. But all of the big fish I've had, all the big pollock have come back in with no lead. No lead. So when that when that lead's in yeah. and that lead's stuck and that fish initially hits a bait like that yeah. and they just dive yeah. or shoot, when that lead snaps off, that hook that hooks a fish. Yeah. So now it ain't coming off. No. Because it puts so much pressure on it. And then of course all you've got is a straight line straight going to straight, your fish. Going for the fish and just um yeah let so, him, yeah let him do his thing. You wouldn't want it too easy to snap off. No 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 right. definitely not definitely not. So that was our second episode of the Top Rod. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much, Bobby. Thanks, Cheers, so much. mate, buddy. Cheers. Thanks.